Right. Iceberg. Big. 183rd Street. Shit look like a stank. Let's start over there, dude. I don't know, man. Nothing I really want to give you. I know. It's all right. <laughs> Nigga, I Vegas can't be choosers. Point three. Thank you. I, I ain't throw the whole shit in there, man. You smoke this. I don't care. Thank you. Love what you. What that mean, nigga? Love you. This nigga's wild annoying, Dot. I don't know if I don't know Yo, if you, you tuned into our shit, man, but this this nigga really annoys me a lot. It's all good. He's one of my good friends, you know what I mean? I love him to death, you know what I mean? The nigga nigga annoys me, he annoys me. You know what I mean? He's one of one of them type of niggas. I love it. Yeah, you know what I mean? What's a friend that ain't annoying you sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. My best friend. Yeah. Heard you. See what I'm saying? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. If you've been smoking rock or under a rock, you now tuned into the personal party podcast. Cheer. Nigga got oh he also got the wackest ad lib and podcast. We history. here, baby. I'm hyped. We here with it. yo said the legend, yo said. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Let's get it going, my yeah, nigga. Yeah, yeah, me. So like popcorn. Let's go smoke. Yeah. Talk to him. Look, man, you know what I mean? I wanted to keep this legend thing going. And, and you know, and I like to talk to my senseis. I like to talk to to the niggas that inspire me, that push me, that, that I respect, that I honor. And, and, you know, we was talking behind the scenes already, Dot. So I'm going to go on and say, our shit is conversations. Yeah. I mean, we just having a conversation. Teacher to the student. You know, I always want to learn. I'm, I'm always asking questions anyway. Yeah. So this is just a regular little smoke. There's a questionnaire. How I, I be doing? Friend but to friend. Friend though. to friend. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I got it. But anyway, you know what I mean? I got my motherfucking big brother, the legendary Derek D. Jot Angeletti. Yeah. This motherfucker. Indeed. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's big. Legendary. Extraordinary. Legendary. Extraordinary. And very, very necessary. Facts. <laughs> One, you know what I mean? One of one of the few senseis that say, hey, Dizzy, that's not right. Wrap that over. Or, nah, too many syllables. Drop that word. Yeah. You know what I mean? Pick up oh, the pace. Pick up the pace. You know what I mean? You, <laughs> give, me, give me one of them things yeah, that make me yeah. do this. You know yeah, what I mean? Let's get a bop going. Let's get on. a bop going. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Oh, we got another Brooklyn mite in here, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, clearly. That's how it you know what I mean? That's BK. Like, that's yeah. Big BK in here. Crown Correct. Heights. East Flatbush. East Flatbush? Yeah. Fenimore between Troy and Albany, baby. Uh, oh. Yeah, right there. Right around the corner from Wingate and all that. Man, that that's shit. a big spot right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, got, I, got, I got family members over here on Tilden. Flatbush. Okay, I went to Tilden. It's crazy. I went to Tilden High School. Yeah. You already know. So. Yeah. This nigga knows somebody everywhere, son. He always got some family somewhere. It's like, yeah, I got family. Yeah, I got family. Got a nigga. big family, nigga. My grandfather had 11 kids. Now you be, I believe you. You be knowing what you be talking about. Because Clay, your shit be very descriptive. 35 so grandchildren. You can't, you can't. I'm one of them. Yeah. Facts. We deep. 35 grandchildren. Yeah, that's <laughs> we deep. That's he had deep. 11 kids. One of my uncles had nine kids. Yikes. One had eight. Yikes. And they all just stacked up. Word. Yikes. Hmm. I'm the middle one. That's crazy, right? That's yeah, crazy. Go ahead, That's bro. crazy. But anyway, I got a walking gem in this motherfucker. You know what I mean? And like I said, I didn't even prepare to ask no questions because I just wanted to just have a conversation. Let's do it. Because we was already gone. Yeah. So you know what I mean? Like, for me, it's no secret. I always I always ask you about big. I'm always asking right. you big questions because yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm fucking obsessed with the era that y'all guys blueprinted. You know what I mean? And, and and to know where you at, you got to know where you came from. You know what I mean? And my style came from from y'all, from watching y'all and being a student and learning. And 
you know, when I got more deep into rap and really started to study the credits and and study the magazines and, and really be a savant for the craft, I started to learn the production side of things. You know what I mean? So, like I said, Life After Death, I always say that. That's my favorite album of all time, the most complete, best album of That's all time. Fact, to me. That's to me, You know too. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. What's yours? That's love. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if I have one. I mean, I, I told Dizzy earlier, being a part of it, obviously, I feel blessed and honored, but we made Life After Death based on other movies. Mm. You know what I'm saying to you? So, it's pieces of movies in there. If you go back and listen, that's how we made albums. We made albums based on movies, and I'm sure a lot of other studios and a lot of the record companies did the same thing. So I admired Tupac's albums, Outkast albums, Nas albums, you know, even Mob Deep albums. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mob. Um, mm. Big Daddy Kane albums. So, you know, I get it though because Big, it's like lightning in a bottle, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people say he only made two albums, but technically he made four. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Cause he wrote Kim album, mm. the Junior Mafia album. So, in a four year span, he made five albums because Life After Damn. Death was a double album. Facts. And Born Again, ain't nobody, nobody count that because he wasn't here. Yeah, nah, Born that Again. That don't count. Born that Again, don't ain't count. Really, that don't count. Really, That's that like was, a that mashup. Wasn't, yeah, that was like a mashup. Yeah. It's 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 Ready to Die, Junior Mafia, Little Kim, Life After Death, double albums. That's five albums from '94 to '97. Mm. That's prolific. That's prolific. prolific. That's prolific. That's platinum prolific. albums. Yeah, that's prolific. Platinum albums. Hit records. Hit, hit single records after hit everything. single after hit single. So for those that don't know, in a three year span, five albums was put out. You know, so that's probably why the effect he had on people because you didn't realize you just OD'd on B.I.G. without even realizing it. Mm. It was all in your. It, it was, was all, all in your veins. Yeah, it was all in the veins. All you know in your saying? DNA. Like all that. in your veins. Like that. Um, yeah. Yo, I ain't gonna hold you. <clears throat> when I was younger, like, ready to die was a little aggressive for me. So I like that's not aggressive. What kind of word? Like yeah, when I say aggressive, yeah. now 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 bust it. Like, I yeah, said yeah. when I was younger. Mm -hmm. what, right. Right. So. When I was young, I also got it in Life After Death. It came out when I was in seventh grade. Yeah. So I was able to digest that and get that better now because maybe at that point it was a little more commercial for my ear mm. as a youngin. Yeah. Now, suicidal thoughts and yeah. all that Those other, songs. all the dark shit on, mm -hmm. on Ready to Die kind of scared yeah. me. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. like, like the like the singles. It, you know, I I, I no love Biggie. Problems. I knew yeah, all that, but that wasn't on Ready to Die though. Yeah, oh, you said Ready to Die? Big Papa, Juicy. Yeah, you yeah. feel me? Like that? That yeah. obviously we know that's the wanted. Wanted was, was, was like okay, I could fuck with it. Okay, it was a story, but it's 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 a story, but it's it's hardcore, but it's Biggie. Okay, that's Biggie when he hardcore, right? And but then it had. Like I said, the suicidal thoughts and like yeah. the other joints, and it was like it was a little hard for me to digest yeah. back then. And even when I listen to it now, I'm like I'm so used to hearing big in that life after death pocket that I don't want to hear nothing else because that, that shit was, was graduation so polished. for him though. Mm -hmm. That was graduation too. So what people heard, you didn't hear that on Ready to Die because he he wasn't in that space. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying the flows was different, the attitude was different. You know what I'm saying and. The music changed in that short period of time. The, the texture of the music changed. And his experiences were different too. Mm. So what you're hearing is a whole bunch of new experiences, mm. you know, in a short period of time, you know. And so that's probably why Life After Death had the effect on people. He was a student of hip hop, so he was able to tell them stories in a way that it put you right there in the room. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, when we made albums, we was making movies, so we, you know, we was looking at movies, real life movies. We'd be sitting in the studio looking at real life movies and how they put together and say, you know, cinematically that's gorgeous. Mm, like the score of the movie, or, or like no, just the, the, movie, just the itself, movie itself. The movie itself, right? So how could we musically make that 
like scenes breaking down in scenes type shit. Yeah, how can we musically make our shit cinematic like that? Mm -hmm. Musically, mm -hmm. so it feels like you watching it on screen mm -hmm. without the video. Fuck a video. You know what I'm saying? And that's how we made all our albums. Mm -hmm. you know how did saying? you meet Big? I met Big through Puffin' them, you know, from being around. I met him in like 93, from being around. I just came home and I um, started fucking with Puffin' them, but they lived up in um, Scarsdale. Puff had everybody living up there. Mark Pitts, Harv, and Groovy Lou, and all of them. Mm -hmm. The team. <laughs> but I was living at mom's crib in the basement, and she wasn't having that going to live with grown men shit and not paying no bills. Mm. So she's like, now you got to get a job, drop some money every Friday on this counter, and you can go do what the fuck you want to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I did that. I got a job, and I would meet them niggas every night after work. And so it just got in where I fit in. You know, I wasn't really working for them. I was just, those were all my Howard friends who's making moves now. I just came off the television screen mm -hmm. from being a rapper. Mm -hmm. I ain't doing that no more. So now, you know, I'm one of them. Yo, didn't I see you on Video Music Box? Yeah. When I first met Big, I reached my hand out to give him a pound. He said, nigga, I know who you are. I watch you on Video Music Box. Right, right, right. <laughs> so that made me feel instant comfy. You right. know what I'm saying? I knew a couple of his OGs because I grew up on... Um, my father lived in, um, in Best Style in Bainbridge between Ralph and Howard. Mm -hmm. So I knew a lot of his OGs that played ball and shit like that in Brevoy Projects, you know, mm -hmm, a little mm -hmm. ways down. But, you know, and then um, I got to meet him and D-Rock and Gutter and all of them and C's. And we just clicked because, you know, Brooklyn style, we just yeah. clicked. Mm -hmm. And plus I used to be an MC. Well, I was an MC. Emma MC. Emma MC. Still, so, still an MC, right. 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 So, I could relate a little bit more than anybody else in the room because I had already been on the road, already know what it was like. So he could sit down and quiz me that, you know, Puffy couldn't give him that same thing or Hoff couldn't give him that same thing because they, they didn't have that experience. Now, I did. I know what it's like to be signed to a label. I know what it's like to have A&Rs all in your shit and you not having the control and having to hit the road and eating peanut butter jelly sandwiches, staying at days in and five niggas to a room, you know, that type of shit. You know what I mean? I, I, I knew all that. So I was able to relate to him. And so, and then plus, because I was an MC, he trusted my ear to, and I'm already a 100 nigga. Like, mm -hmm. my mom's always told me the shortest distance between the two points is a straight line. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's mathematics. That's hard. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a direct nigga, as you know, there's a, to trust. I, you know, I, I know. that way a nigga, that way a nigga <laughs> gotta misconstrue what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm saying? It's a college word, misconstrue. Yeah, so you said you was in college. You said you went to Howard, right? I went to Howard University, yes, sir. Shout I, out to HU. Yeah, um, I didn't graduate, though, because we went off to go do our thing in the music business, but I went to Howard. I went to Tilden in Brooklyn. I graduated from Tilden. I did get my high school high school diploma. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> Yeah, so, so yeah, you met Puffy and Howard? I met Puffy and Howard, 87. I got there 86, he came 87. All of us met Howard, Harv, Mark Pitts, Groovy Lou, Puff, Chris Latimer. That's crazy. Yeah, that's a hell of a class. Yeah. That's fucking that's nuts. Yo, what the fuck is that? Yeah. Shout out to HU, baby, you know. So that was real impactful. And to see your man, you know, come up and do his thing, you know, we rallied around him and say, yo, you know, he doing his thing. Who this Diddy? This is Puff, yeah. yeah. Well, y'all, you know, Diddy, love, whatever he calls it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm, he's still, <laughs> love he's still, now. He's still puffed to me. Right. You know what I mean? That's my fan. But to see him doing his thing was was actually love for us. So it's like, you know, damn, we can help him and do our thing simultaneously. Mm -hmm. I'm on board. You know what I'm saying? So Puff started out throwing parties and shit, right? Well, we threw parties at Howard, yeah. You know, we was called a black man in Puerto Rican production. That's how black we got to. Puerto Rican production. That's how we started doing our thing. And then I went and got a record deal, Two Kings in the Cypher. I was signed to RCA, and he worked for Uptown. Mm -hmm. So we both left and to come, you know, come. But I stayed in D.C. He moved back to New York. So you know, it's 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 just you know, I, I know I know a lot of people got a lot of questions about them errors. You know what I'm saying in that era. But the realization was that it's just it was just a moment in time that you know it was like wow. You don't realize we all sitting in the room and we about to make some motherfucking magic. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we all, everybody in, you know, like, team break. You right, know what right. I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's that type right. of shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. How did you start getting, how did you get into music? I was a rapper. I started off as a rapper in a group called Two Kings and a Cypher. Me mm -hmm. and Ron Lawrence, who I ended up producing with, right. we That's was in crazy. a group called Two Kings and a Cypher. 
and we made some records. We dropped the album in 91. Matter of fact, August 13th was our 30 year anniversary of our wow. album dropping. Wow. Yeah, so that. shout out to Ron Lawrence. And, um, and then, you know, we went through that industry nigga, 4,080 shit, you know, record company, whatever that tip yep, shit, that yep, was, you yep. know, we went through that. Um, you know, we ended up losing our deal in 93. Um, and that's when I said, you know, um, uh, shit got a little dark, you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, at the same time, um, Puff got fired. So it was dark for everybody. From Uptown, huh? Yeah, so yeah. everybody's in, you know, we in dark mode. Scrambling. Yeah, and then some light came. Hmm. And that's when everybody said, we saw the light at the end of the tunnel. We could see it. It's real, it's real small, but we all see it. You see it? I see it? You see it? Yeah, we all see it. <sighs> Take a deep breath. Let's go. And as you got getting closer and closer, the lights start getting, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. more brighter, more brighter, more brighter. And then we start figuring it out. Oh, okay. This is the path we should be on. Let's exploit it. Form hmm. like Voltron. And then if you get an artist like Big, you get an artist like Mary J, you get an artist like Faith, you get artists like Mason and, and, and all of them, next thing you know, shit start clicking. You know what I mean? But yeah. Coming graduated eighty six and then went to went to Howard, dropped out to do the music shit. Y'all niggas had a formula. You know what I mean? And the formula still works up to this day. It's a formula that it's a hit record formula. You know what I mean? As far as structure goes, as far as air candy goes, as far as I not even just make you dance, but make you move. Make you feel It's even something. deeper than that, fam. It's even deeper than that. And it's much simpler, to be honest with you. Hmm. We service providers. Hmm. Talk about it. So, supply and demand. Supply and demand. Hmm. But you got to know what's going to work in your neighborhood that ain't there. So, for example, wherever we at right now, somebody figured out a pizza shop is going to work here because ain't one within a 10-block radius. Hmm. So, if I open up a pizza shop right here, it could work because they're going to come. So you got to know your personnel. You got to know your area. And uh. so it took a little studying and realized, you know, we kind of drug dealers, you know. And so if, <laughs> they, so, <laughs> so if they want the red tops, let's give them the red tops. Mm -hmm. Let's not try to get them purple laces when that's not what they're asking for. Mm -hmm. And then when you got, once I got, once we got their attention, then you could throw in the sideshow shit that you really want them to see and really mm. want them to get. And then bomb. Right. Now they fully. Now they. Now we got all their attention. They. They. You know. Now they pretty much accept whatever we give them. And if this. And then also Prince said it best. We got to see the sign of the times. Music really dictates the sign of the times. Hmm. So whatever's going on, we got to facilitate that. So right now I'm sure there's niggas that's making records right now about the COVID and about Facts. you know and about Afghanistan and all types of shit going on because that's what the times we in. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we did. Just, you know, and if you go back into the 70s, 80s, and 60s, you know, Marvin Gaye was talking about what's going, going on because that's what, what it, that's what it was. Then you got to mm. the 70s and it was disco and motherfuckers was talking about shake your booty and do all this other shit because that's what it was. You get what I'm right, saying? So right, we're going right. to have a lot of booty records, going to have a lot right. of shake, shake, shake records and all that type of shit. Then the 80s came. It was really braggadocious. I'm this, I'm that. Mm. I, I was listening to EPMD the other day. That nigga Paris Smith... Brothers on my jock, niggas on my jock, 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 jock. <laughs> it was always on my jock. I was like, yo, they, they, you know, yeah, niggas was on your jock in there. That's how niggas felt. You on my jock, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was bugging the fuck out of your parish. Every record, somebody was on that nigga's jock, for real. But that was the error because, you know, you bite niggas biting. You know, you know, in that era. So, you know, and so we just took advantage of that, man. And everybody was able to, the beauty of our shit was everybody was able to, express themselves and bring something to the table. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. I was one of them old school cats that called Gats Toolies. Mm -hmm. So let's Cold put that in a rhyme. That? Let's put Cold that in a rhyme. Because, mm. you know, D-Rock would always bug out, you know, fuck with me because they talk in the studio. My shit, I had a little joint I could put in my pocket. You know, you wouldn't even know I had it on me. 
Yeah, that, was my, that was my two. <laughs> that's my two. <laughs> that's my two. <laughs> <laughs> so hold yeah. on. So that, that's, that's, that's where that line came from? I, I, can't, I can't necessarily say that's where the line came from, but... You know, I'm around all day, so you would right, think right. And, it was inspired. And it ain't, by and it ain't right. yeah, it's inspired. You know, and right, right. you know, I could tell you lines that we some were definitely inspired. But you know, I'm just giving you the example of we used everything around us. Right. That was the beauty of what was there. Like you know, what I'm saying we used everything around us to incorporate, and nobody minded because mm. if it worked, it worked. You know what I'm saying? Right. If it worked, it worked, and that's really what we was on. It wasn't on. It gotta be this way. It gotta be this way. We saw the bigger picture, but let's, you know, try some shit, throw some ingredients in the pot, taste it, and nah, 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 let's try it. Oh, that works. Hmm. Let's go. You know what I mean? Oh, man. See, yeah. because, you know, for one, you're an MC. Right. Overall. So you see through the bullshit. That's one. Two, you're a hell of a producer. You got an ear. You know what works. Three, you're an A&R. Right. You know talent. I'm a songwriter, right? too. You're a songwriter. Right. We right. add that on too. Yeah, I gotta right. add that. So on. right, nah, you got a yeah, Grammy. I, I mean, I got, a you got a motherfucking Grammy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, right. so you know what I mean. You already won. I will always tell you that, like, right. nigga, you already won. This right. is why you know what I mean. I gotta. I'm only <laughs> listening to the niggas that won already. Right, right. I gotta. So you you was already a player coach early. Right. Right. Now it's a lot of great artists that you work with, and I'm sure a lot of them, like myself, stuck in our ways. As oh, far yeah. as you oh, know, yeah. mm. wanting to do something that that's true to us, but it's not true to make no money, mm. right? Because sometimes, like you know me, I'm a rapidy ass nigga. I love to rap, right? And, and even you would tell me like, but, but where's the where's the joints like? And you and you like nigga, I know you can make them. I watch you make them, right. and then I would and you know just this is the conversation we had. I'm like, right. yo, well, I don't feel like my crowd want that from me, right? Because that ain't what they want, but it ain't about always, like you said, it's not always about what they want. But also it's about you said not about being, being complacent. True, you said something about being true to yourself. That's that's a true statement, but on the flip side of it, sometimes an artist walk in and don't really know who they are yet. Mm. Mm. Talk to them. So, Talk about that. So a lot of times what they, what they say is you see yourself through other people. So you know what I'm saying? So... Perfect example is when I first met Murder. I heard him all over the tapes. When I met him, that's not what I expected to see. Mm. I would have introduced that nigga to my daughter. Mm. Dimples, cut everything fresh to death from oh, head to toe. Mace? Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah man. Murder. Of course. I nigga, know what he's talking about. On, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is me talking to the people. Oh, yeah, yeah, nah, the people yeah. gotta yeah. know. <laughs> nigga, they gotta go in here, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> They gotta, they gotta right. catch up. You know, right. yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Google right. is your friend. Who's right. Go- exactly. right. Google is your friend. Google you know what I mean? Friend. Word. So immediately, that ain't gonna work for me. Mm. Murder ain't gonna work for me. The warlocks ain't gonna work for me. Mm. Mm. That ain't gonna work for him either. Just ain't gonna work. It sound like you know what I mean? Y'all niggas should be wearing leather jackets and have a W on the back with a motorcycle. We like it's a mm. it's a motorcycle gang. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So these are things that from the outside looking in that we get to add on and say, in order to really achieve our goals, let's mold this a little better. Y'all may not see it yet. One of my niggas, one of my good friends, Tracy Lee, his name was L Rock. When I met him at Howard University, that was his rap name. His name, his group was called L Rock and the Black Hoods. Huh. That ain't gonna work for me. That's a fact. No, he'll not tell you work. that's not gonna work. Mm-hmm. We on campus, bitches like, hi Trey, hi Tracy, hi Trey. So I'm like, nigga. Who, by the way, he went to Howard University. <coughs> That's crazy. Right. Howard was, was lit. Right. Howard Guru was lit. went to Howard Guru too. Guru went to Howard yeah, University yeah. as God, well. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So I suggested to him, we should just keep your rap name your real name. Mm. Oh, all them niggas hit me with the Spike Lee. Oh, <laughs> oh, nigga. We ain't doing that, nigga. Oh, oh. But it you, worked. You get what I'm saying? So sometimes it takes the village to come in and say, fam, you might want to hold the mirror at this angle mm-hmm. to yourself huh you know you know you know when you shave your head you put the mirror and you turn right. you turn so you could 
that's what we was able to do to some. So I agree with you. Yeah, niggas want to be rapidy rap and all of that. You want to do you. But if you trust the peoples around you, sometimes they can add on to that cipher to make you be like, okay, a slight, slight left turn. Hmm. You hear what I'm telling you? You hear what he's saying? Yo, I don't even want to argue. <laughs> you you hear what he's saying, though? Because <laughs> I'm in the streets for real. <laughs> you door to door. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I tell you, you graduated. You door to door. You're not in the street. You're not on the blocks no more. You graduated. What the you fuck talking to smoke? I'm talking to smoke. I said the same shit to him so earlier. Was you, him, was you like, watching yo, the Twitch earlier I when I said these, that? Nah, I just got here. I ran over here. They like, yo, niggas start hitting me, and I called. I called Richie, and I ran over here to these. Anyway, I'm in, I'm out here. I test your shit. I be trying to tell you. And what I, you be telling them? Yo, this 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 song with the girl joint you got to the video for him. Like I said, yo, you shooting the video for options? Oh, he be cause nah, he making record you. making record for the hard legs. Yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, you know I just had this conversation with him. I'm like, yo, you a teddy bear, bro. The ladies love you. Yeah. Go to the hotel downtown. Yeah. Big. He don't want to listen. I, I nah, I get it. B.I.G. was the same way, just so you know. B.I.G. was the same All way. Right. Like, he wanted to stay hardcore. But when you're walking into a room, and like I said, there's niggas that you actually trust. At least give it that old college try. Hmm. As they say. Hmm. And what's crazy is, here's the part, what's crazy is, you ain't got to force the nigga to make the records. Right. He making them on his own, so he it's already, it he already him. know. He already kind of know it. You feel? I feel you, I feel you, I feel you. But he already know it. it though. Like he it, it's it called validation. There. Niggas need validation. Because he already making it. It'd be a difference, like I, I could tell you a lock story. You asked about a story? Let's go. LOX story. <laughs> Hardest niggas on the face of the earth to me. You know, Same. Cold, Cold Crush Brothers, I grew up on Cold Crush. Mm, Cold Next Crush. to Cold Crush, it ain't but two or three more groups that I would even put in the, in that, and Locks is up there. Facts. They having a hard time fucking with, with us, especially me and Puff in the room because we... <laughs> Kiss told me this himself. <laughs> yeah, they having a hard time. They, you know, I'm making niggas write rhymes over, niggas is, yeah. niggas we is need frustrated. Hooks. Niggas is frustrated. <laughs> so let me tell you what them niggas did on their own. They went on their own and made that If You Think I'm Jiggy. Wow. Get the fuck out we of here. We didn't get them niggas that record. That's crazy. They I made love that, that record, they by the way. They made that on their own. What? But they didn't really make it to make it like, this is the one we want to go with. They made it just to shut y'all niggas up. Shut us the fuck up. Because <laughs> we was making the niggas rap on shit like, ah, oh, we got to rap on this. Styles P especially. I love, you know, Panero is my nigga. <laughs> if I made Panero, Panero, and me and Panero about the same height. We little bit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if I made Panero even think about writing a rhyme over, or Puff made him think about rhyme over, that nigga face, he'd get this jail face on like he get ready to <laughs> raise a nigga up. You know what I'm saying? But they do it. So finally, they walked in with that record. Wow. And got mad because this nigga Puff danced up and down the fucking like, this the one. studio. That shit hard. That. The beat fire. It, it, Everything it was hard about that. It was hard, but LOX wasn't murder. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And we teetered and tottered with that. Meanwhile, money, power, respect is really where we need to be. Can I live is really where we need yeah. to be. That's really where we that's need to fact. be. That's you know what I'm saying? Chest to chest, back to the back, back is really yeah. where we need to be for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we teetered on that other shit. You get what I'm saying mm -hmm. to you? So you got to respect them for giving it that old college try. Right. right. Failure is really preparation for winning. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So they didn't fail at it. It just was eye opening to say, you know what? Okay. We tried it. Jay-Z tried it with all that sunshine shit yeah, and all that shit. Face, yeah, he right. tried all that shit. You had to give it that college try because you never know. Hmm. You never know. Murder walked in like, this he, is where I'm going. It was, home, it was a home run. I, but he wanted to go there. Once uh. we, the murder was off, once he realized, oh, they love me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't got to do this that mixtape <clears throat> shit I was doing earlier with L and all of them. Mm. I could do it, but I could do it a little special now. 
Because on Clue Tapes, he was still flaming shit. Oh, yeah, because he's nice. Been flaming nice. shit. But there's a way to texture that to where you still think I'm nice. If I'm going to dumb it down just enough to get the soft legs involved. But I dare you, any of you other niggas to come. I dare you. That's why he was able to get on down the lines without a problem. Hmm. Then you look at other MCs who tried it. You don't hear them on down the lines. Mm-hmm. You don't hear them on them type of records because niggas didn't respect them from the jump. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Unless they made it themselves and asked other niggas to get on their records. <laughs> right. You get what I'm saying? Right. So no mm. disrespect to certain people out there, but there's other rappers that we didn't call mm. to say, come get on this record with us. It's no need. Right. <laughs> right. We got everything we need right, right here. Right. Mm. And was DMX kind of joined the squad you know as a you know a cousin and we got cousin kim our cypher's complete nigga Hmm. we got commercial from the hardest to the hard from the pretty to the dog pound however you dog we we got it all and that's really you know what what we're trying to achieve where we can kind of isolate ourselves from everybody and keep this shit all in here you got all the producers you need. You know mm. what I'm saying? We got everything you need. We could do R&B, we could do country, we could do pop rock, nigga, whatever you need. Underground, techno, we could do all of that here. Mm. You get what I'm saying? <clears throat> so when you got all that, why not try all that? One stop shop. That's crazy. Try it. If it don't work, you know, it don't work. We talked about Snoop Dogg, that nigga made a gospel album, nigga. Nigga hey, made everything. Exactly. Pop rate, nigga made album. everything. Nigga made a fucking 70s Can album. Can you imagine him not trying it? He might not be the Snoop Dogg we That's know to this fact. day. And he right back in the fucking gangster Snoop that I grew up on. The first because he already established himself. Thing. That's what I was telling you. Bro, you bro, your shoulders, you brush your shoulders off. They are, it's already, you're already in. You're already in the get along gang. So trying other records is not going to be like, yo, this nigga does a, tried this shit, so he's not nice no more. Hmm. Right. So I dare you. Say I'm not nice no more. Try it. Try it. Test me. That's kind of how the attitude you got to have, and that's the attitude we have with them. So, LOX, don't be afraid to trust. So, that's why they went and tried it. But that, I know I drifted, but that was the nah, story. No, nah, no, I got it. Nah, that, that was, yeah, that was, was great. You know, I love, yeah. I love the story. Yeah, that was the story. Come on, guys. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I, I love it. Yeah, yeah. I fucking love it. And, and okay, I'm not going to. No, no, no. Yeah, not at. Who inspired you, D? Me? Yes. Shit. LL Cool J. Mm. Mm. Grandmaster Cass, Cold Crush. Mm. Grandmaster Flowers from Brooklyn. I don't know if y'all up on the original Grand Grandmaster Master Flowers. Flowers. J- J- James Brown DJ, right? Well, he wasn't. He DJed at a James Brown concert okay. at Yankee well, Stadium, I, I 1969. That from... So that's why Brooklyn niggas have a problem with the Yo, so, origin of hip hop. So you think oh. hip hop started in Brooklyn or the Bronx? I, what you think? I don't know where it started. I'm just saying that there were things going on in the different boroughs that weren't documented the same way it was documented in the Bronx. That makes sense. You get what I'm saying to you? And in Queens, because in Queens, you had some of the DJs way before Flash that he'll tell you he grew up listening to Hmm. that are in their almost 70s now that were the first dudes to bring speakers out to the park or the first dudes, you know, before there was a mixer, niggas just had to drop the needle. There was no mixer. So you had to take the turntables and drop the needle in the spot you need. You had to be precise. Mm. Then the white man, I forgot his name, he came up with the mixer. That threw the game <coughs> all over the place. So now it's like, you know what I'm saying? Right. So these are things that ain't really documented from the Bronx hip hop. The Bronx hip hop really was a party and, you know, the MC and the DJ. Where it was like, you know, okay, party people in the place to be. You know what I'm saying? It was that guy. You know what I'm saying? Don't the forget, to, don't forget yeah. to tip your bartenders. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Right, right, you know right. what I'm saying? License plate number 752. They told in your car right now. You might want to go out. That was, it was a master of ceremonies to keep the crowd hype. Right. And then slowly but surely, the busy bees and 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 um and the Hollywoods and these guys would, you know, now throw your hands in the air. Yeah. And wave them like you just don't <laughs> care. It started, yeah. it started gradually getting into mic control, crowd control. You know what I'm saying? Master of ceremonies. And then you got 
MC manship start coming out. So then you get the Melly Mel's, you get the Cool Mo D's, you get the, the Grandmaster Kazes and, and the whole crew, and you get the Furious, and you get all of these dudes and the Jazzies, and they KRS coming. They the coming. Well, right. KRS is a little, well, later. a little later. He came a little later. Yeah. But these guys are the formulation of what we are now. Mm. The wordplay wasn't the same because they we still in ABC mode. Mm. And we still coming out of the disco era. So the niggas we love, they got jerry curls. They wearing flanges on their jackets. Right. You know, we still trying to boom. And then Run DMC comes and says, we don't got to look like that. Sneakers, jeans. Oh, there's a lot of us mm -hmm. from the hood, Brooklyn, saying, yeah, I really wasn't with the, you know, the curls down with the beads coming mm -hmm. off. Even though that was hip hop. It was disco-ish. It was, right, right, and even right. then, if you watch some of the documentaries and hear some of the old cats tell stories, there was a battle within them. So guys usually got dressed up when they hung out. And now the rappers ain't really dressing up the same. So they really didn't want them niggas around. Mm. So they battling amongst themselves and the Hickam Run DMC just creeping through like, okay, while y'all battling each other, we gonna set a tone. Then LL Cool J, to me, who should be the logo for hip hop, because he came with how we look right now. This is how he looked back in 1981, right, 82, right, right. 83. Facts. Facts. Mm -hmm. Now, whoever he jacked from is fine, mm -hmm. but he made it popular to look like this, lick your lips for the bitches, and mm -hmm. still give you rock the bells, and still give you I need love, and we liked it both. We ain't call them, you know, boom, 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 and then... Then the KRS is coming, and the Cool G Raps is coming. Even the Mikey D from Queens is coming. You know what I'm saying? And you, Kane and Rakim, they coming. Mm -hmm. And they're changing. Everything is evolving. You get what I'm saying? So those are the people that inspired me. I'm with you. Watching that evolution. Watching, you know, MC Light, Debbie, you know, Debbie D and them type of artists. You know what I'm saying? Watching the evolution come to how we get to Lauren Hill. Mm -hmm. How we get to Lil' Kim. Mm. How do we get there? You had to go through these other chicks. You had to go through... How do we get to somebody who we like, like like uh, 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 Biggie? Or, you know, you got to think of Slick Rick. <clears throat> Facts. You got to think of, you know, the greatest storyteller of them all. Mm -hmm. Even who was so ahead of his time. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? He was so ahead of his time. He's doing ad-libs. He's doing voices. Back and forth, one nigga's talking, the other nigga's not. He's mm -hmm. he's doing all of this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So these dudes was from out of space to us. Mm. They just didn't know it. It's crazy. So that's what's, that's kind of the people that inspired me. I know I'll be, I'll be nah, long, nah, long, nah, long, nah, long nah, 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 it's great. It's that's great. Rocking. It's yeah. crazy because you rocking. say, you know, when I think of Mace, I think of LL. Cause that's well, that's from that's the same one of the claw. movies we it's watched. One of the to make his album. That's one of the movies we watched. Yeah, uh. the LL Cool J movie. Mm. And, and by the way, like I say about Life After Death being a, a well, a perfect album. Yeah, Harlem World was the same. Yeah, and that's not just because I'm from Harlem. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like and I'm from Brooklyn, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> like the shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? At at the yeah. time when that shit came out, it had so many records, like. I, the streets didn't even have to choose the singles. The singles was already just the singles. You talking about like, for murders? For album? murder shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was just yeah, too many. Yeah. It was too much hot shit. Like it still flows that still lasts to this day right now. Absolutely. You Absolutely. know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. now when it came to melodies and flows, right? Because all of these niggas is rappers at the end of the day. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Like MCs. Like mm -hmm. niggas that came from the era of battle rap. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Now when it come to making songs and melodies and shit like that. Did they have to get coursed in a shit like that? Like, or or was that just no, the them producer, just falling the, in the line? The producer artist <clears throat> relationship was great in that era because going into the studio making record was foreign to them. It was it's a whole different animal than being on stage going live doing your routines. It's a whole different animal. You you have to hear yourself and you gotta be in love with your voice on the microphone mm -hmm. in a different atmosphere. It ain't no echo chamber. Yo, 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 yo. It ain't that on your voice. Hmm. You know what I mean? So a lot of MCs got intimidated by that, going into the booth, hearing yourself. You know, one thing I say, I told every MC, you, if you don't love the way you sound to yourself, we ain't going to love you either. That's a fact. That's why the guard came off, because he told Marley and all these niggas, nah, I'm going to rhyme like this. Rakim. Mm. That's, that's me. I came through the door. I said it before. 
Nah, I came through the door. I said it before. That wouldn't have sounded right that for him. Right. That wouldn't have been him. So as a producer, you got to sit back and say, wow, I'm learning something right here because we used to God. And so that producer-artist relationship was great back then. Mo D's and the, like I said, but Mo D's, unfortunately oh. for them, a lot of them, by the time they got to make records, it was a little late in their careers to sustain. So like Cold Crush, for example, by the time they got in to make records, they was already 10 years in, hmm. in the streets. Yeah. That's that's vet time. Hmm. You know, that's like 31 in the NBA type shit. Right. You're not old, but you almost out. A 21-year-old come trying to come in and bust your ass. Right. Facts. Hard. Run you up and down the court. You know, make you take the third quarter off. Facts. So that's kind of... So a lot of them dudes, unfortunately, you know, the first one through the wall always gets the bloodiest. Mm. Mm. So they was the they got the bloodiest. So they labeled us to just walk through uncut. Mm. They already took all the damage. Yeah, because them budgets was different. Yeah, them budgets was different by the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Them shits was open yeah. up. We had tour buses. Them niggas had tour vans. Right. You know what I'm saying? That type of shit. You know what I mean? So yeah, you know. Um, yeah, so you know they 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 they, they kind of paved the way, but it also helped with the producer artist relationship because guys wanted to get guided on how to make records. Everybody, every artist goes in thinking we know what this is. I don't mm -hmm. know if you ever saw Rico Love like a year ago. You know Rico Love the songwriter. Yeah, 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 yeah. He put up a post about me. And Mark Pitts had brought him up to write some records and do whatever. And Mark said, you need to meet d -Dye. He brought me to the studio. And at that point, he was on his own dick. He said, I'm so on my own dick, nigga. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting up there like, that, that ain't it, boss. And it fucked him up. Mm. But he got it. He understood. Like, this is a teaching moment for me mm. here. I'm, t I'm telling him how to breathe. Take some syllables out. Listen to yourself. Let's let, let's 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 do this here. Let's do this here. And it became a it became a real, you know, teaching tool. And I got that from being in the room with the Devontes and the Teddy Rileys and them type of dudes. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Hey. So yeah, the the producer artist relationship was really great in the in the early '80s, late '80s, and then into the '90s. It started changing with technology. You know what I'm saying? And, it, and success, obviously. You know, you get a successful album, all of a sudden, you don't think you need nobody. Mm. So a lot of the dudes, that's why they be like, them sophomore efforts be hard if you don't, because you might not have the same people around. You might not have the oh. same tools around because you ain't taking the same lessons the same way. Right. You get what I'm saying to you? Listening so, to Wallow the other day, he said, you got to listen while you hot. Facts. <laughs> he facts. said, listen while you hot. Don't yeah. listen while you cold, cause nobody ain't gonna tell you shit while you cold. But yo, I wanted to get in. He was, um, what was your favorite person to work with out of everybody you worked with? If not, I know you. You don't probably want to say the favorite person, but who was the, who you had the most connection with in the studio? Man, I spent a lot of time with my partner Ron Lawrence. Okay. As far as production wise. He's one of my favorite people to work with because he was very technical. He made me look at things I wouldn't normally look at as a producer. Um, Teddy Riley's a great person to be in the studio with. Um, Artist-wise, man, Mace and B.I.G. are probably at a, at a tie because mm. they knew what the end of the line was going to be. Mm. So now it's just about going into the gym and perfecting. So for A and R, for a producer, for a songwriter, for an artist, that's heaven. It makes my workload not as much. Now don't get it twisted. Other artists like Br, Black Rob, R.I.P. He, he knew. <clears throat> yeah, God bless him. He knew what he wanted to do, but he also didn't know what he wanted to do because he could do it all if he needed to. So it was hard to kind of pinpoint it. That's why it took so long for him to come out. Rob was signed before Mace and the locks. Hmm. He didn't come out till after them. Because of that, we, we trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? We trying to figure it out. Then when them niggas showed up, it was 
pretty evident what they was going to do. The bars were, you know, just... The posse I mean? cuts back then was fucking... <clears throat> yeah. Man. You know, I, I, you know, Mary was a joy when she felt like she was a joy. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, she was a joy. So I, I guess a few of them. I don't really have a favorite, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. I could tell you a few people, you know what I'm saying? Unknown people, too, that never came out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then you got the hard-headed niggas and, you know, shit like that. And motherfuckers don't want to do this, don't want to do that. Okay. Mm-hmm. No problem. We'll show you. What's your most mm-hmm. memorable session you've been in? Hmm. Most magic happened. Uh, Give me two. I know you've been in so many. I need two. <laughs> I might need three, but I'll, get, I'll take two. Um... Mary J and Method Man doing the You All I Need. Get the fuck out. But the remix. But the remix. The remix was hard. The remix was hard. hard. Yeah. It was probably hard. Remix, right. But, yeah. this, but this is the story. Them niggas didn't want to put those rhymes he put on that was the same rhymes from the slow one. Hmm. Mm. So when we was in the studio, we told Meth to do it. Them niggas, all the woo hit us with the Spike Lee. Oh, nah. nigga, they, they, they trying to sell out, nigga. They, oh, nigga. Meth didn't get it. None of them got it at first. We had to get mm. Puff on the phone and all types of shit. And we like, nah, niggas, the same words, just over this beat. Mm, 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 you know what I'm saying? It's like mm-hmm. a little hyper, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. but same mm-hmm. lyrics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, you know, they had the pen and paper out. They was getting ready to write new, new lyrics. Mm-hmm. So that session mm-hmm. was memorable because after he kicked it, Niggas was shaking hands. Yeah, y'all, y'all niggas was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, was kind of all right. <laughs> yeah. That niggas was kind of all right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, y'all niggas right, is man. all right. Y'all niggas could be all right. <laughs> y'all niggas is all right. And then, um, damn, that's crazy. Um, hmm. Um, being a Mary session when she made that, um, that, uh, my life. The wow. actual song, My Life, you know, just being in the room because we all grew up on the Warriors joint and to hear what Chucky did to it and to hear the passion that she put in it and when it was done, that and, you know, the happy record, me and we had a, there used to be this Virginia Beach weekend and me and Puff drove down together in his car mm-hmm. and that's, that's the only two songs we played for eight hours. It was just them two songs all the way down on repeat. All the way down. Not we didn't stop to hear nothing That's else. That's back then when you could do that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On cassette though. <laughs> <laughs> I rewind that bitch. Word, yeah. word. And then um, hmm. yeah, so many. Um, uh, the first time I got to do a record with DMX, that was special mm. because mm. the nigga gave it his. <laughs> uh, Yo, that. <laughs> I was like, the nigga, the, yo, put, yo, yo, throw the beat on. <coughs> Threw the beat on. Mm-hmm. Shit came on for two seconds. Hmm. All right, I got it. What, what do you mean, dog? What, what do you mean you got it? He already had the rhyme in his, you know. Of course. This is a beat that I can freak and just drop the real. All right. Niggas done started something. I knew that was it. But um, D and Y and them didn't. It was like, yo, he going to spit another verse. I was like, nah, nah, nah. We good. <laughs> <laughs> that shit had nothing to do with money, power, respect, nigga. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. nothing. But the energy, the, the shit that came off your body when everything started off with the. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we good. Don't worry about it. I got it. I don't need nothing else. You get what I'm saying? So, Thanks, yeah, that's a couple it's of minutes. one of those things that you instantly know. Yeah. He, he, you know, he didn't mention nothing about getting no money. He didn't mention nothing about no power, no respect. He didn't mention none nothing. of that type of vibe, it, but it didn't matter. I always thought that. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> no, 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 no bullshit. <laughs> that, I, you listen to the It didn't even and matter. And it, it didn't the, matter. Beat, the beat is so hard. It didn't, it didn't matter. even it matter. Didn't as soon as he yeah, came in, this is just a guy like me. Didn't get to the song, bro. No bullshit. It didn't matter. That's DMX, my nigga. It was like niggas didn't, like, I. Yeah. Niggas done started something was the same energy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Although niggas done started something is just like, niggas done start. You already know you could just go 
that's an aggressive song yeah, as it is. It. Money, power, respect. The beat was aggressive. The hook was, you know, based on money, power, respect. But what he was saying was a part of power and respect. Right. You know what I mean? The aggressive part. Right. Now, you know what I mean? It's it's one thing that I'm going to get to. Me and Show was talking about earlier. But then before I get to that, right? So Torin and, and, finding, <clears throat> and finding artists at that time. Now, it's a story you told me a while back. It's, it was an R&B artist that was downstairs from the studio on an open mic, right? Yeah. Now, open mics, open mics now, a nigga wouldn't even attend an open mic. Well, we didn't go right. there to attend the open mic. It was hat. We knew it was an open mic there. We just wanted to go take a break from being in the studio, and it just so happened that they was doing the open mic down there. That's why we went. But wow. we didn't go there to go find an artist. We went down there to go drink and smoke. Wow. And while we're doing that, they got an open mic going on. Why not? And then Carl Thomas. On an open mic? Now, yeah. bust it. It gets better. It gets better. It gets, it gets better. Yeah. So right. So so y'all y'all go down there to smoke and drink. Yeah. And niggas go to the open mic just cause it's, it's going on. Niggas right. stay. Fuck it. Carl Thomas is singing at the open. Mic. Yeah. So after that, it, I think it was you said it was you and Hoff. Me and me and Stevie. You and Stevie. Me and Stevie. Stevie. <laughs> Niggas Legend. love we love Stevie, Stevie Jordan. Jordan. Stevie Jordan. We love Stevie Legend. Jordan. Send in the kid. <laughs> right? Send like the kid. so y'all niggas looked at each other like, I'm sure, like, yo, what the fuck? Nah, the room stopped. Mm. Chicks around, niggas is blazing, we drinking, you know, champagne and all that's mm. going on. You know, and somebody's on stage saying, eh, another person go, eh, all of a sudden you hear his voice come on. Just it was like the movie just the scene just stopped. And it was like smoke coming off the stage and we looking at each other like like you know, everybody You know what I mean? Did he know y'all was there? No. Damn. That lucky motherfucker. Hey. Huh? Do me a favor, can you can you come upstairs? We right next door. Come meet everybody. We'd like to enter yeah, you know. Next thing you know, that nigga's singing on one of my records right there. He he wrote it right there. The world is filled with pimps and hoes. Hmm. Right then and there. Let's just talk about those I know. Now, mind you. This this is the, I love this chick me goosebumps. I love this story. I love this story. No, no, no. But peep it. But peep it. Peep it. Now, mind you, we working on Biggie's album. Biggie don't like that beat. He ain't, yeah, 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 yeah. he ain't in love with it. Get better. Get better. Just He ain't in love with it. He ain't in love with it. Me and you know, Puff loves it. I love it. I made it. So trying to force it down his throat. No homo. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? And so every session, you know, before he came, I throw that shit up. He'd come in. That shit would be down. The engineer had to put a new two inch up because he was like, I ain't fucking with it. So Puff was like, yo, Dot, you might not, this song might not make it if, you know, you know, we, you know, when Biggie's working on other shit, so I was like, ah, oh, man, I figured this out. So when the nigga mm -hmm. call came, and the world is filled with pimps and hoes, oh, now I give it to B.I.G., he's like, oh, why you ain't say something, nigga? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, when the Remy's in the system, system and no and <laughs> right, but it took the hook it took the vibration it it to, life. to bring it to life. Because mm -hmm. sometimes the beat sometimes ain't overwhelming. Mm. I will admit, some beats just don't overwhelm niggas. Right. But the song does. Mm. That's some producer talk. That's a fact. This is my sensei. Nah, you know what I mean? Bendy. You know what I'm saying? Word. Word. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying? So that was that moment right there. Yeah. Carl T. I yeah. fucking love yo. Yeah. You, see, you see what I mean? That was Carl Thomas first joint on on Yeah. Come on, man. Come on, man. That was his introduction. See, see that to they the going world. they going crazy right now. None of them knew Yeah, that. they going crazy. None of them knew that. Go crazy, yeah. go crazy, <laughs> get stupid, and go yeah. crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Win, 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 Right? Fucking with Papa, man. Now, now, look, you, if, if anybody knows and been in the room 
with that. We gonna do a part. Remember, we got. Oh, part we doing there. this in parts. Your man gotta hit the highway. Yeah, nah, nah. We doing <laughs> that. That the that the sensei is we doing this shit in parts. Yeah, this we is, got this to is, because my 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 I'm my, three my big brother in. is I'm a three, series. I'm three decades in, man. He, we we gotta go back to the nineties. That shit. That 2000s. shit like the Jacks, that shit like the original Amer- Jackson Five: The American Dream. You know, the movie that shit had like five <laughs> parts. Yeah, shit had yeah. five parts. That's that's yeah, my that's my D that shit. Crazy. We'll be back. Right, you but, better make the right? bad boy movie. <laughs> nah, 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 pop, I'm putting it out there. You can't cut out D. But wait, but wait, 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 but wait, but wait, but wait, 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 he had two more. Oh, no, you can't I, cut me out. Come yeah. on, I got all the Let singles. You got all of the singles. What the fuck is you talking about? Cut who you can't. You can't. That's when I get on my own dick. I'm, I'm a real sorry, humble I'm nigga. Yeah. I'm a real <laughs> humble nigga. But I definitely could get on my dick with that, nigga. Yeah, I definitely. You know, and I'm not going to do it. I'm saying I could. I have the ability to jump on my own dick at any so, point in so, time. So, right. You so, getting all this, homie? Yeah. <laughs> so, right. So, right. Before before that get out of here, right. This is this is a segue into the next episode when, when you come back. So, you're a funny nigga. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> You're a funny nigga. You're a funny yeah. nigga. Just naturally, nigga, I love being around you because I know I'm going to laugh a thousand times. I don't think he knows now, the inspiration for me, but go ahead, man. Now, Appreciate that. Skits on rap albums. When I was a kid, Legendary. I like certain skits, certain skits after the Mad Rapper, I loved. Like, I loved when the Locks was doing the J.J., all that funny shit. It was, it was hilarious. The Mad Rapper was... The template, it was a character. Like, it was a recurring character that was just like, if if the Mad Rapper pops up, it's like, you you wanted, you read into it. Yeah, I was yeah. platinum. You fucking read into it. Yeah. For one, you wasn't doing that for nobody else other than the Legends, right? So you couldn't have that, so... Well, a couple of people got the Jermaine, 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 Jermaine Yeah, Dupree, but uh, legends 15, still. Yeah, legends. Yeah, 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 they yeah, legends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They fucking legends. It wasn't, I, I get it. They all right, legends. Right, right, <laughs> legends. Not doing that. Legends. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the fuck. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. For, for, for those two people, we going, that's on part two. But coming with the mass, with the mad rapper, where the fuck did that come from? Well, first of all, shout out to Prince Paul, De La Soul. Richard Pryor, Red Fox, because mm-hmm. that was <laughs> how I grew up. You know what I'm saying? Same for this. Um, Prince, the De La Soul album, Three Feet High and Rising, for me is one of my top favorite all time albums just because them niggas didn't give a fuck what you thought. Oh. That was an example of fuck our A&R. Mm. If there is one, he got to be on board with us. You know what I'm saying? And the skits. The albums were a and would by them and their producer, Prince Paul. So I studied that as a movie to say, okay, now what could I do in order, you know, it was, it was Puff's idea to make commercials. For the movie. For the movie. <laughs> let's, let's take a commercial break. Okay, well, I got one. Over here, coach. I got one. These niggas is hating on us. We were sitting in the room, and back then, <laughs> back then, niggas was hating. You act like we did it. Right, right. So I'm saying, we in the room, and back then, you know, we ain't got cell phones, so the, the, the uh, what's the name? The uh, front desk person got to call into the room, right. you know, to come in, you know. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> and that's back in the days when videos you like knew this when they were coming on they were scheduled and premieres were happening mm-hmm. yo Tupac's video is about to come on mm. we all in the room we got you know you've been to daddy's house you of know course. over the, the tv yeah. over the booth so mm-hmm. we could all see it and shit hit them up come on niggas is like no nah they, no get the this is how y'all seen hit them up together yeah like, so the reception is called in like yo they about to play the video well we, we know what time has been tv come right, you know right, right, video. Right. oh hey the video about to come on you know you, the they premiere. announced yeah, it yeah, there was yeah, announcing yeah, like, it was just like on radio world premiere like right, that right, 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 so right. we getting ready to watch this video and the niggas is in there like oh shit who's in there nigga the whole squad in the whole squad is in there puff big oh everybody see everybody 
what the fuck did Papa say when he saw that? How did you feel? He had to be lit. He a Brooklyn nigga. He had to be on a million and a million so and fifty. That's where. That's where when when I saw the Drake the beefs and all that. Mm -hmm. Your man. That's not us. Hmm. Like we can't come back this way. That's not us. Hmm. We too sexy over here for our shirts. <clears throat> Mm. We sexy for our shirts over here. <laughs> sexy for my shirt. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We getting money. You yeah, right? yeah, right. yeah. That ain't that ain't our flavor. So we gonna pull back. All the way, sir. I got an idea, Coach. Oh, shit. let me try something, please. Begging. I grabbed the front desk girl. Her real name was Shay. That was her real name. Wow. Shout out Shay. Wow. Trevin Jones, that was his real name. That's actually Puff's cousin. He was just Yo. one of the studio managers. I grabbed him in. So I got an idea. We're going to do an interview. And I'm a hate on bad boy. I'm going to hate on him. Because that's what's happening. The niggas is hating on us. Hmm. I know it's not going to be all the way effective the way we'd like to because we used to... <laughs> Because right, right. we have them, we have them niggas. Right, here, right, right, right. You know facts. What we do have, but we can't be overt with it. Mm. That's just not our flavor. We don't fuck up the money. We we we, we, we reactionary. Up. Right. But smart, in a smart way. Mm. So that's what inspired the Matt rapper. We can end it on that, and we were to be continued. Like that's what got me started, and got us started. Was seeing that video. But it also right. said before the wait, 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 wait. But it also said we doing something right. Because if these niggas took time to do that, we on our way, nigga. Buckle up, nigga. It's on. Fasten your seat belts. It is on. That's how we felt. And on that note, I'm so glad we had this time together. Oh, look, 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 look. I usually sing, I usually sing Frank Sinatra with him before I go. But you know, I'm not going to leave y'all yet. Yo, my my sensei so gone, but I'm going to chill for a little right bit. Now? Yo, look, man. I'm going to tell you something about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you something about yourself. Let's clap it up for the team, though. Let's clap it up. Bing, 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 bing. You, you, get a B, you get a B plus this episode. You did very good. You know you did very good. Thank you. You did you know very saying? good. Like, we, I told part, the people. I can't wait for part two. I told the people because the people was like, man, show came on his shit today. Oh, that's what they were saying? I said, finally. I ain't going to hold you. I said, finally. But I sat back and I let you do your thing. Listen, What's, man. All right, before you fuck it up, what's the stupid shit you say? Curls for the girls, waves for the babes, naps for the hood rats. Show Broadway, ho, we got D dot, smoke, dizzle, personal right. party. Cheer. All right, all right. Niggas got taglines. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas got little catchphrases. <laughs>